Good morning everybody. It's uh, mid-February and time for the first sap boil. I'm tapping 15 trees this year, which is a, quite an upgrade from last year. I only did five. Probably got about 20-25 gallons of sap. Here's my new evaporator that you may have seen. Did a video of it not too long ago. Let's fire it up. chilly we've got some ice chunks floating in the sap but uh, we'll take care of that if I had some thoughts as I'm watching this do its thing I feel even though I'm only a you know couple maybe 10 gallons of sap in or something I feel that I've used a lot more wood or I'm using more wood than I did last year. And what I think it may be is that the cinder block uh, setup that I had last year, the eva cinder block evaporator, even though the blocks fell apart after a year, the blocks were good insulators. I mean, they had that dead air space, you know, in the middle, those two holes of the cinder block. And I think that contributed, you know, it had a lot of insulation. And here, I mean, it's just a steel barrel. It's I and mean, you could see the heat radiating off it. I'm quite warm right over here. So I think I'm losing a lot of heat through the sides. Or I know I am. Uh, one thing I imagine I could do is get that thin, I don't know, like one inch fire brick or whatever and line the, line the sides. It's also possible if you wanted to, you could probably set this, you know, you'd have to do this when the ground isn't frozen, but you could set this in earth or pile dirt around it. And uh, that would partly you know, uh, set it up so it doesn't tilt over or anything. You wouldn't even need legs. And on top of that, it would insulate and put more heat right into the right into the uh, the sap. But I mean, for for what we're doing with this scale of operation, I don't really think it much matters. It gives me something to do to uh, throw wood in there and keep fucking around with it because not much else I can do. Stare out and survey the uh, survey the empire of dirt. It was too chilly yesterday and today, so there was no no sap in those buckets. There's one of my swarm traps. I set up some swarm traps, trying to see if I can catch some more bees. Now, for those who haven't seen my previous uh, cinder block evaporator video, my uh, technique is once I get the two boiling, I choose one, usually the hotter one, in this case it's the rear one. Uh, I choose that to be like my, my finishing pan or whatever. So I'll let them boil down and then I'll take a ladle and ladle from one pan into the other and then I'll take fresh sap and pour it into the first pan. That way it all condenses down into into one pan and, uh, and then I could pour it out from there into a pot and then finish it on the stove because this is a little uncontrollable to get it just right as far as the uh, proper amount of sugar content. This one normally would be boiling more. I just added I just added some sap. Uh, like I said it's got ice chunks in it so definitely cools it down a bit. Another thing that I think I'm going to try this year, my, my syrup last year, even though it was perfectly fine, I, I enjoyed it. It was very, very dark, and it was very maple-y tasting, which is good, but it wasn't as sweet tasting, which I thought was strange, compared to like the grade A amber or whatever that you buy in the store. So I thought that maybe um, the sap slash syrup just boiled too long because I keep putting more and more into the same pan so the sap that was there first thing in the morning was still boiling uh, at the end of the day so I think what I'm going to do once this boils down enough uh, I'm going to pour it out into uh, into my pot there and then start again with fresh sap on both on both pans so I don't have 
all the sap boiling for the entire day in this one pan. I think that might have darkened it a little bit. Again, you know, cosmetic, I don't think it really affected anything. But on an actual evaporator, you know, it has that pathway in it. So the sap only spends enough time on, on the fire to evaporate enough, and then it gets drained out. So I'm going to try that this year and see how it goes. Well, the better three quarters had a good idea, as she usually does. I had some cinder blocks left over from the evaporator last year. She said, just stack them around there. So, as you see, I'm a, I'm a few blocks short, but I stacked it around. I don't know if it's going to really do anything at this point anyway, but uh, did it anyway. I also moved the barrel over here since it's a little bit lighter now. There's a whole ton of ice in it two inches of ice on the sides. I'm trying to melt it a little bit and knock that ice off and, and then uh, evaporate that too. So here's another cool gadget for those of you who haven't seen the video I made last year. This is called a refractometer. It measures sugar content and it's a fun little thing to have to play with while you're boiling your syrup. You don't need it though. This just tells you, again, your sugar content and lets you know when the syrup is ready. I believe 65 to 67 percent is the acceptable like industry standard sugar percentage for maple syrup but I may have that wrong. You can also calculate it or figure it you know figure out if your syrup is ready by measuring the boiling point if you have a candy thermometer there's a formula to calculate what the boiling temperature should be based on your altitude because, of course, as there's more sugar, the boiling point goes up. But I like gadgets, so I got this. So the way it works, you lift up that plastic flap, you put a couple drops of the liquid to measure in there, then you look through it. You see that line there down right about at 20? It's blue above and white below. So that means we're at 20%. All right, here we are inside. This is what's left of it. I've uh, calculated about 28 gallons I was, of sap I was boiling. We're at 35% sugar or so, so I'm finishing off on the stove. I'm going to keep a close eye on it. In my experience, the when you get to this point, the percentage sugar percentage changes really fast, so I'll keep a close eye on it. And I'm also getting ready with some canning jars. I got some lids warming up. I got the jars in a 250 degree oven rather than uh, boiling them to sterilize them. And then also, since I couldn't filter the sap going in because there's a lot of ice chunks, I'm going to filter it when I put it in the jars. Also that helps get rid of the uh, sugar sand it's called. It's minerals and little chunks of stuff, I don't even know what, that will settle to the bottom of the jar. It sounded good the first year, but uh, when I got to the bottom of those jars, that sugar sand is quite like sand. It's very crunchy and not really pleasant. So, just got a, a sieve with some cheesecloth and then a, a canning funnel. Alright, so we've reached the right temperature. Got the jars out of the hot oven. Just carefully pour it in there. That's about, I don't know, three quarter inch head space or so. Put the lid on there. I think I have enough here for a full jar. Let's 
So there you have it. Out of about 28 gallons of sap. Now none of the trees I'm tapping are sugar maples. I've got red maple and Norway maple. So out of 28 gallons or so, I got a little under three quarters of a gallon. And this is only the first boil. I'm guessing I'll do this at least once, maybe twice more. So that's it everybody. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if you like this and make sure to hit that subscribe button. Keep up to date with what's going on. Thanks for watching everybody. Come on back for more.